Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be talking RAM and I'm gonna install some RAM in my server my new Lenovo X3650 model 4 and it came with 32 gigabytes of RAM and well that uh, just one cut it just one each of um, these blocks are 32 gigs of RAM so um, I should be able to put in some more but there are different types of RAM and uh, we're gonna have a look at that I am in the BIOS of this server and there is different information that we can gather here there is a little bit of information here um, down here it says something about the memory the most important thing is that there are 32 gigs of RAM and the memory speed is 1066 megahertz uh, this will become important later also it says that the RAM is running at 1.35 volts this will also become a bit important later but yeah that's how it is right now the BIOS also is able to tell us a little bit more if we go in here on the memory um, we have kind of some of the same here it doesn't say the frequency but we can go in and get more details just take processor number two and check out um, we can see the different sizes here this is a 4 gig memory block and that's how they're installed in this server I'm not sure if, if it's installed the correct way or I would guess that it is this server uses DDR3 RAM and this block is a 32 gigabytes and these two blocks are 16 gigabytes and they are kind of different this is called RDDR RAM and this is called LR DDR RAM and they are not compatible so if I put in these four blocks of very awesome memory which is HP branded I can install 128 gigabytes of memory in the server but then I will not be able to use these 16 gigabyte blocks afterwards because they are of a different kind of RAM there's a couple of other RAMs, there are some called U-RAM and there are some called H HC RAM, Hyper Cloud RAM I have no idea what that does but well we're gonna be trying something, I'm gonna try and install these we're gonna take out the RAM that is in the system and we're gonna be putting these in just these four and see it um, count up to 128 gigabytes with those and then we're gonna try and put in some of these and see what error it comes up with see if it um, how much it's gonna hate us and if it will boot at all and um, well to do that I've actually prepared the server over here so that it can be pulled out of the rack so I'm just gonna try that I lengthened all the cables so I should be able to pull it out I'll probably have to go around the back and help the cables uh, might be good to get on this side of it so let's try and take the cover off here we are powered on right now so I have to be a bit careful the memory is not hot pluggable but I can remove this plastic thing so we can see it I think how do I do that So here are the memory already installed, there are 8 blocks and each of them are 4 gigabytes. So I'm gonna power off the server and we're gonna try and exchange those. So with the 32 gigabyte blocks we're gonna be putting 2 blocks for each processor. I'm actually gonna leave the BIOS, I don't know if I can break anything, but don't wanna take that chance. No reason for it. Exit setup. I'm gonna be using this somewhere over here. The server is powered off, so I'll put this on and remove the RAM here. I don't like all the blinking, I'm gonna disconnect power also. There we 
down. Power has been disconnected. And we'll take off this. So that has been removed. And then I will unbox these. On the back of the lid there is a explanation here of how to put in your memory and there is the order if there is one processor or two processors and the, the order varies because if there is two processors you need to give the first the first block of memory to the, the first processor and the next one to the next processor and we only have the four so um, I'm going to be occupying number 1, 13, 4 and 16. So um, let's uh, do that. So they're numbered. So down here we have to, to put in number, number 1. And that has to go that way. And number 4. And that will go in that way. Well, each processor has four memory uh, channels and here we are putting in one block in the first two channels. We will do the same for the next one and that would be number 13. Like that, number 13. And I'll just check if that's... And number 16. So, the next white one that so now I should have installed 128 gigabytes of memory in this thing so let's um, put some power back on and see how it uh, handles that just gonna power it on let's see if it um It's alive! Hitting F1 here to go into the BIOS. And let's see what we see. Go in there. System summary. Down to memory. And now we have memory mode independent. I do believe that this means that it's not mirrored in any way. Memory frequency is still 1066 megahertz. And that might seem odd, because these memory blocks, um, they are like 14,900 L's, and that should be able to handle uh, 1,866 megahertz. But it just so happens that this processor up here is the very low end of processors for this server. And it can only handle 1,066 megahertz, so whatever I put in here, I will never come over 1066 megahertz. This is something that I'm working on. Um, processor upgrade is in the mail. But it sees 128 gigabytes and the memory voltage has got up to 1.5 volts. You can mix memory voltages of 1.5 volts and 1.35 volts but what it will do is it will select the highest voltage for all the memory blocks. The 1.35 volts is really power saving. Um, so you lose that when you do this. I have no idea if the memory can take damage in any way, but well, let's go see the other thing in here. And, oh, that, yeah, the memory. And let's see, same thing, independent. I just want to see what we can choose here. Yeah, mirror and sparing. So independent, it just counts all the memory. It's like a RAID. This is like a RAID 0. And this is like RAID 1. And sparing is, I think that's like hot spare. Never used the other ones. 
memory is too expensive. So let's go to the top and see. Processor one has two blocks, one in number one and one in number four. Perfect. Then processor two should be 13 and 16. Awesome. So the next one should go in that one. And the next one should go in that one. Okay. So I want to try and put in the R memory. These blocks. I want to put in some of those. They are 16 gigs. R2RX4 PC3, which more or less just means DDR3 RAM, and they are also 14,900 RAMs. But this is an R, the other ones was L. I'm gonna put in some of these and see uh, what the server says to that. So it can be a little bit hard to see. I tried, I left in the 32 gigabyte blocks, and as I said, each processor has four memory channels so the first two channels of each processor is occupied by a 32 gigabyte block and I thought maybe if I put in one of the 16 gigabyte blocks in the first of the next two channels on both processors this might work but if we go around here to the screen um, it's it's eating the signal down here sorry about this it says system hold it involved memory configuration so um, it does not like that much so that does not work you're not able to mix these types of memory too bad so in this situation i'm faced with a real dilemma right i have these really awesome 32 gigabyte blocks four of them 128 gigs of ram but i have a whole bunch of these 16 gigabytes I can put in 24 16 gigabyte blocks in this server and that will bring me to a total of 384 gigs of RAM. Um, that's a lot of memory, right? So I think we should try that. I'll take out these 32 gigabyte blocks and we will occupy the server with 16 gigabyte blocks. Well, now I've fully occupied the server with memory, 16 gigabyte blocks. And over here on the screen, let's see how that looks. So, system information, there, let's go down see what we are at. Okay, oh, we are still independent, 1066 megahertz, 384 gigabytes of RAM. 1.5 volts as I said each of these processor has four memory channels and each of those channels has room for three blocks so that is um, 12 blocks for each processor but if you occupy the last block in each of the four channels even just one of them the frequency of the memory will drop um, and in this case because this is 1,866 megahertz dim RAM, they would actually drop down to this 1,066. They would drop 800 megahertz if you occupy the last space in each of those memory channels. Right now it doesn't matter because the lousy old cheap CPU that this server came with is not able to do anything more than 1,066 megahertz awesome 384 gigabytes of ram nice let's go in here system settings memory same information max performance power management okay it's possible to balance out performance and how much power it consumes Awesome. Um, up here, all the RAM blocks are occupied. It is noticeable that each of these memory blocks, they use power. Anywhere from five to eight watts per block in a server like this. So, well, they cost money. 
not only when you buy them but also when you use them so if we are talking power consumption it would be better to put in the biggest blocks like those 32 gigabyte blocks that I put away if I could put those in I could have half the number of memory blocks and use half the amount of power it's not as if a 4 gigabyte block uses half the amount of power compared to an 8 gigabyte blocks that's almost the same if I occupy the server with the 4 gigabyte blocks it will use about the same amount of power as if I put in 32 gigabyte blocks well RAM is a science of its own and I'm not gonna be standing here bragging to you about me knowing everything about it but I'm learning along the way as well just a uh, half a year ago I did not know about R and L RAM um, couldn't care less um, but it doesn't mix also if you want to go out and look for RAM for servers you have to know about buffered and unbuffered also called registrated and unregistrated RAM and for servers um, they usually use registrated RAM you can kind of see that on the blocks Let's see if I can find a block where you can see that actually here we have a memory block and it's a it's a 4 gigabyte block um, on the back you can see all of these chips they are pretty much the same size right but on the other side look in the middle there there's a big a big chip and that's uh, that means that this is a registered uh, piece of RAM and it it has to do how the computer slash server uses the RAM in a computer um, the computer knows which RAM block to talk to in a server it just asks the RAM and each RAM block will know if it has the data that is being requested so this RAM block you will send a request to it and this circuit here will register it oh this is this is not a request for me and it will pass it on in the on the memory bus and somewhere along the line one of these memory blocks will be the right one and it will start communicating with the processor this is also kind of why there is so many memory blocks in a server it's a much it's much easier to do it this way because you don't have to have the chipset control the memory in as high as the there is still some but the memory blocks will kind of handle it by themselves it's kind of like having good co-workers instead of just working together with idiots if everybody is just a little bit smart they will get the job done if you just have idiots you need a really good boss to handle off the tasks and make sure that they are being done and that's kind of how it works in a computer you have really dumb RAM out there so the computer and the processor talks a lot to that RAM and um, well in a server it's different you have smart RAM and the processor just handles out a job and the RAM blocks themselves will be sure to return the needed information for the GPUs so I hope you got something out of this video I got a lot out of it 384 gigs of RAM awesome thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye Thank you.